so I want to show you how you can attach a bat if you don't have bat pins. Okay, so I'm going to just take a little ball of clay here. This is probably bigger than I actually needed. It's a lot bigger than I actually needed. Let me just take some of that off. Just center this up. All right, so there we got a pad of clay, and I added a little texture to it. And I'm just going to stick this on. Now, I could use a round bat. It doesn't matter what shape the bat is, really. Okay, I'm just going to stick that on. And now I have a square bat. Now, what do you have to watch out for? You have to watch out for your pinky on that corner. So, as I do this, let's just do... just going to squeeze that on. As I do this, I have to be really careful with my uh, pinky on my left hand not to like get it caught out there. So I always go smaller than what the bat actually is. I'm not going to go to the, the edges of the bat there. Do check out my wheel throwing playlist for beginners if you want to learn how to throw. This video is just about alternative bats and how to use them. All right, so once I've thrown my form and I want to take off the bat, I can take a wire, run it under the bat, in between the clay patty and the bat, and there we go. Now, I do have clay stuck to the bottom of this bat, so I'll have to clean that off later, but that's how you can stick a bat down. And then I can use that clay patty again to stick another one if I would like to. I also want to show you how you can use other things besides a bat um, to actually, uh, you know, make, make a bat out of something. Now, I have right here, this is a, just a piece of canvas, and it is heavy duty canvas. You can see it's kind of stiff. If I put that on there, okay. this gives me like a little flexible bat that again I can pick up. It's not rigid, so when I take it off, I'll have to be uh, aware of trying to keep it flat. Here we go. All right, so I've got a little cup form thrown. Now, this next little trick can be done uh, anytime you have a form and maybe you just want it to stiffen up a little bit. So this is a heat gun, and I'm gonna zap it for a couple minutes. All right. I firm that up just a little bit because this clay is so soft right now. This was some reclaimed clay that I had that apparently I added more water than I normally would have. I'm going to run that wire underneath the canvas bat, and as I pick that up, see, I can just set that aside, put it on a wear board. When it stiffens up, I'll be able to peel that off. All right, so with this little wheel, um, I know I've said it uh, previously, but this is a very small little wheel head. And my bats, even my smallest bats that I have, will not fit on this down into the splash pan. These are my typical bats that I use. Um, even though this has no bat pins at all, I can't fit this on there. So I need to have a smaller solution. So I wanted to show you uh, another way that you could just use um, some basic material. Now this is tar paper. This is roofing paper. Uh, tar paper is sold in the U.S. as it's it's roofing paper. It's felted paper that has tar in it. Um, this is like a 15 pound uh, uh, paper that I uh, buy. It's three foot rolls and um, it's 
I mean, if you have a friend who's in construction or you have some leftover from a roofing job, it's kind of nice. Um, I just buy it in big rolls because I use it with my kids with uh, slab making. Another material that you could use is something like craft foam. Okay, craft foam would also work really well with this. Um, uh, maybe just a piece of acetate or some, some sort of a stiff piece of plastic would also work. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the little pad of clay that I have on here. This is just a little centered pad of clay again that I've used it uh, earlier. But I'm now going to just stick the tar paper on there. It doesn't have to be particularly centered even for this to work. Um, this just is just going to help to stick it down. Again, please check my beginning throwing playlist for all of the step-by-step -step tutorials on centering, opening, pulling, and throwing the various forms. I just went through this quickly because again this was about alternative bats. All right. So I'm leaving the base of the walls a little bit thicker at this uh, moment because I'm, I've got it on this tar paper bat. I want it to have a little bit more rigidity to it. Um, I'll trim away the base of the walls when it gets leather hard. So as I'm ready to cut this, I just have to peel up the tar paper a little bit, get underneath that edge, and then I'm gonna ride against the underneath side of the tar paper to cut it free from the little clay pad. And the nice thing about these clay pot pads is you can use them repeatedly. So there we go. Get my hand underneath there. And so I've got a little, let the bottom of the tar paper, I can't show you right now, the bottom of the tar paper does have clay on it. So I'll, I'll wait when that gets a little bit firmer. I'll have to clean that off and everything. Now, once the pieces have dried a little bit, these have dried overnight in a uh, covered shelving uh, that I have. So if I left them fully uncovered, they'd probably dry out a little bit too much on the rim. I want them to dry evenly, but they have stiffened up nicely overnight. And all of these can come off of their little bats. Now, this one is a bisque tile bat. Um, I could technically leave it on this bat and eventually it would release. Sometimes what I do with these bats is I dry it from underneath with the uh, heat gun or hair dryer to kind of dry out the bottom a little bit. If your bottom is thick enough you could just take a wire and run it through underneath and honestly you know what I didn't actually wire it off on the day that I threw it because I was envisioning that I was probably just going to let it release on its own. But um, there that's wired off and now this can be uh, tidied up and cleaned up a little bit. Now the other two being the flexible bats are a little bit easier to get off. So this being the tar paper that literally just peels right off. And because the rim is a little drier than the bottom, I'm going to set that upside down. And this one, I didn't actually give any sort of a cut, apparently, when I first threw it. So I'm just going to give a little kind of cut down there so it doesn't rip clay away from the foot. So there, as I cut it, now that gives me a place where I can just peel that off real nicely. And this is going to be uh, trimmable when it stiffens up a little bit more. It's still a little soft uh, and just needs to stiffen up a little bit more. So that is how you uh, remove these little bats. Now I'll have another video on how to trim on that little uh, Amazon pottery wheel so you can uh, check for that one. Uh, the one thing that I did fail to mention was about the tar paper. So the tar paper is completely um, uh, reusable. You can use it several times. It will start to wrinkle after a while, but if I clean this off, let me just use a rib here. This was the back side where the clay had been stuck to it. I can clean this off, I can sponge it, let it dry flat, and then I can reuse this again. So the tar paper bats are kind of nice, just like when I do slab building with my students with tar paper, we can reuse those patterns multiple times. And same with this canvas, I'll just kind of sponge that off 
allow it to dry flat and I can use it another day.